Hey guys, today we're going to be showing you a breakdown of how we go about installing the Kia Telluride roof rack with our Alpha and Bravo series. Follow along as we break it down for you step by step. Before we can install the feet to mount the roof rack to the roof of the car, we've got to remove the factory luggage rails off both sides of the vehicle. Even if your vehicle doesn't have the factory roof rails, you're still gonna to have to gain access to this area to install some mounting hardware. So we're gonna pull the headliner out of the vehicle, drop it down so that we can access the fasteners to pull these rails off of here. To get to the fasteners, you're gonna need a few different tools. You got a ratchet with a 10 millimeter socket on it and a three inch extension. I've got a T25 Torx, a Phillips head screwdriver, a couple small wedge pry tools. You can get something like this on Amazon and then a standard trim tool. Uh, this one's from Matco, but as long as it has this kind of horseshoe end on it, you will be good to go. We are gonna wear some latex gloves during this because the headliner in this car is a, like an Alcantara suede and it's a really light color. And pulling and pushing, trying to get the panels out of it. Don't wanna put any stains on this thing. This is a brand new car. so. First, we're going to start by removing the back panel. And the seat belt will stay in. This piece will actually stay in the vehicle. You're not going to take it out of the car, but we've got to pop this loose. And I've already done the other side, so I can tell you that there are clips up here that will pop right out. But it's also bolted in behind this darker panel down here. So we've got to pop this out at the same time to get to that fastener. This is a 10 millimeter bolt behind here. One important thing to note is that all the rubber seals around the exterior of the car that keep the, the moisture and the water out of here, they have a butyl rubber tape stuck in between them and the metal channel. And if you were to pull these off, it would string really bad and that stuff has a tendency to go everywhere. So we're gonna take this whole thing apart, but we're not gonna remove these gaskets to do it. At the back panel, push in on the headliner, get your hand behind it and free up. There's a clip here and then there's a clip towards the front and then use the leverage at the top of this to get your hand behind the darker panel and push in on the light panel and out on the dark panel until it starts to pop apart and you're going to open this up can you move around and there is a 10 millimeter bolt right here and another one right back here and we've got to take those out and then this panel will kind of fall out so I'll take this one out first. And I'm just pulling back on this panel. It's plenty flexible to get it out of the way. The other one. And once that's out, this guy will just kind of trapes up over the seat belt. You can let that go and then just leave this setting in here. There's no reason to chase this all the way to the bottom and take the seat belt out. We're just going to drop the headliner down to get to the hardware so we don't have to take the whole car apart. Okay, so the next one, which is right behind the passenger rear door, you're going to use your little pry tool. There's a notch right underneath that airbag cap. And you're going to free that out. It's got a little keeper on it. And there's a 10 millimeter bolt behind there.
And then just like we did back there, we're gonna use this, uh, see where it popped out of place right here. We're gonna grab that, and pop it free, and use it to get to the 10 millimeter bolt that's just to the front side there of the, uh, the seat belt. Got that guy out of there. Now, at this point it would come out, but the clips are still stuck up here. So just roll it and it'll pop free. There's one more clip at the base. And then just kind of drape it over to give us room for this to start to come down. So next we've got to get the grab handle off. There's a grab handle here. There's also a grab handle at the front of the truck. There is a little detent in here that you can use to pry this cap open and there's a phillips head screw inside of this one they're spring loaded but if you throw that flap down it'll kind of hold it out of the way Now we're going to move to the B pillar. So next we're going to pop off the little retainer covers at the top and bottom of the big grab handle right beside the uh, back passenger door. Again, you take your little pry tool, you wedge it inside and just pop these off. These do not have keepers on them and they will go flying. So just keep your hand on them when you're taking them apart. There's also one here at the bottom. And that's gonna give you access to the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold this handle in place. And unlike the, the upper ones, these actually have a little retainer on them to keep the fastener from falling out of the back of them. Now we need to pop out this airbag cover like we did the one in the back. Again, it's got a keeper. And there is a 10 millimeter bolt up in there that we've got to get out. pop this panel loose just like the back ones they're they're snapped in behind here too so you want to start here and get that loose so that this thing will be free and then I just grabbed it at the top and pushed it out and pop the clips loose and then just wag it around behind the seat to keep it out of the way. Now we're free all the way down to the last handle in the A pillar. So now we're ready to remove the last front grab handle that's right by the passenger front door. It's the exact same as the one in the rear. It's got a little catch and you pop that down and it'll hold it back for you. Phillips head screwdriver and remember these don't have retainers on the back of them so if you take this out of the way that screw will fall out and fall under the seat or wherever they go okay. next is going to be the visor and the a pillar 
We're gonna take the visor out first. The A-pillar, you don't have to remove completely. We just have to pop it free. It has a mechanical catch in it uh, in case the airbags were ever to deploy to keep this from flying across the truck at you. We only need to take it out to that point. So once we have this out of the way, it'll just pop free and it's gonna stay open about, I don't know, half inch, three quarters of an inch, just enough to let us drop the headliner down. For the visor, there's, there's two fasteners behind this panel that we have to take off. And then underneath it, there's just an exposed screw back up in here. These are the torques, and this is a Phillips head. So to get to this torque screws, just go between the headliner and the visor cap and work at this until it pops free. And it'll stay attached. Then you can swing the visor, get it out of the way to expose those two screws. These are a T25. And then there's a cable attached to it for the lights inside of the visor. There's a little white, let's see if I can spin it around, little white push tab right there. Just push it till it clicks and it'll release. Man, that went perfect. Next is the screw in the retainer. And it's just a Phillips head. Get that guy out of there. And then just pull this guy out of the way. And once you have this screw out, just take your pry tool and kind of yeet this guy out of the way. Those two little catches right there are what snap it up to hold it in place so that you don't have to fumble around with it to get the screw in it. This little push clip right here, um, on the driver's side, when we tried to get this one out, the top did snap off. So we will ship uh, replacements of these for, that we'll get from Kia. We'll send two replacements for the front and two replacements for the back. Uh, we did this in a good environment. It was warm. It wasn't cold outside, but this clip is really brittle. So I'm going to try and get this one out, but you see how that head just kind of swivels around is I wouldn't be able to, that that one came out. That's what it should look like. The other one, it literally just snapped right at that little head piece right there. So our kit will include replacements for these and the two in the back that we'll go take out in a minute. That works. So next we need to pop the A-pillar loose. And, and again, it's just gonna come out so far and it'll stay in the car. But if you get behind it, that's how far it's gonna wanna go on its own. There is a mechanical catch system up inside of there that I did take off the other side just to make sure that it worked the way that we thought it did. And I do know that we don't have to go any further than this to drop the headliner down. And when you're ready to put it back in, you just are gonna push it back in place. So. The last part at the front of the vehicle is gonna be to access the two screws in the top of the pocket. Again, these are Phillips head. They're right atop the, uh, the sunglass storage area. And there's just two of them. Once you have that, the front of the headliner, you pop that pocket area out. Now this is here, and you've got four plugs here. So we're just gonna pop that one out, that one. This guy, and then flip it around and get the last one. Now this is out of the way and the front of the headliner's loose. There are a couple of clips up here that we'll pull on when we're ready to drop the whole thing, but that's all that's holding this in place at this point. I think. So next, the big dome light in the back, there are two screws hidden behind these lenses. They pop right out. And if you start towards where the seam is, 
you can just click it right out of the way. Do the same thing on the other side. And then there are two Phillips head screws in here. that out this one stays in the headliner there are some clips across here when we start to pop this down but see how that's just coming free with it we shouldn't need to take this out to to get to what we need to get to so at the back of the vehicle there's a push clip right here and another one right here we've got to free these two up and then the headliner is ready to start unclipping and come down these are the same type of clip that's at the front of the truck and they are a little brittle Got that one. And this one. There are two clips that hold the dome light part in. And now see where we're, we're pretty loose through this whole way back here. Now we'll get two people, one on one side of the vehicle, one on the other, and we'll drop the headliner down so we can access the fasteners to pull the stock roof rails. So there are some pretty heavy duty Velcro clips that snap into the moonroof channel all the way around. That's the last thing holding the headliner in the vehicle. I've got Drew over on that side. I'm over here. I'm gonna reach up underneath the gasket and we're gonna pull down. It's gonna make some gnarly popping noises. That's just it starting to release from those Velcro clips. And she's down. Now, two bolts that you're gonna have to remove to pull off the factory drip rail. The first one is located right here. It's a 10 millimeter black acorn style nut. Okay, the other one is right here. And the last one is right up here in the front. So I'll go ahead and pull this middle one out because I'm standing here. I didn't need the extension to get the other side. Where was it, Drewski? It's right here. Just back a little bit. There you go. If you're installing the base model, you'll use our mounting system and a measurement as a location for the drill marks and then it'll free bolt to the vehicle. On the LX models, you may or may not have pre-machined holes in the factory drip rails to secure these spines to. In the event that you don't, you'll use the provided drill bit and stop collar to make these holes so that you can bolt it in. When you set your spines up, you'll take a tape measure to the end of the drip rail of the car and measure to the back of the foot and it should be 11 inches. First thing you want to do after you get the factory roof rails off is clean this channel so that the provided foam adhesive strip will adhere to this metal and not peel up over time. We're just going to use a window cleaner and a microfiber towel. I'm just going to wipe this guy up. You don't have to worry about inside of this track rail here, just on the inside edge uh, where it's nice and flat. That's where we're going to attach to. Now locate the factory holes. You've got one here, one above the passenger door and one towards the front of the car and just put a Sharpie mark on the inside edge here to make it easier to find underneath the foam strip that we're gonna install. Measure two strips out of the foam that you're supplied with your kit, measure them to 85 inches and cut them for the driver and passenger side, then we'll be ready to install them. The strips 
do you start at the back of the vehicle, see where it lips under and you see the roll where there's paint. You want to leave a quarter inch gap right here. Get it started, just pressing it down. Keep it against this edge right here. And then just work your way all the way to the front of the vehicle and make sure that it seals up over those factory holes to keep water out. The foam's not designed to run all the way to the front of the car so that it's not visible when you're looking at the front of the vehicle. But once you have it in place, go back and find your Sharpie marks. Make sure that the foam is fully seated around those areas. Locate that hole and just trim the foam out of the way to make room for your hardware. Locate the BC3 thread locker and the bag of hardware that says rack to roof. You're gonna pull this off and drop the retainer ring out and then this will puncture so that it'll actually start to come out. Do not squeeze this tube. It will really start to come out. Apply the BC3 to the last six or so threads on the end of the fastener all the way around and then allow that material to dry for 10 to 15 minutes until it's not sticky to the touch anymore. And do that with all the fasteners for both spines. So the spines included with your kit are indexed for driver and passenger side with some mill machine marks on them. The D is for driver, the P is for passenger, and the engraved side of the letters goes to the front of the vehicle. So grab the, head, the hardware that you put the thread locker on and let's go install these. The larger holes in the spine, if you locate the rear one over top of the rear hole in the drip rail of the car, the middle one's automatically gonna line up and the front one will line up. You're gonna push your hardware into place underneath the hole. And we're gonna go inside and install the nuts to these. Each location is going to get a fender washer and a flange nut. So find the stud, slip the flange nut or the fender washer over the stud, and then reach up in there and install the nut onto the exposed threads of the bolt. Just as tight as you can get them by hand and we'll finish them up with a ratchet. Do the same thing at the middle and the rear of the vehicle and then do the passenger side. Now we're going to use an 11 millimeter wrench and socket. I'm going to stick the wrench inside on the nut and use the ratchet to tighten the flange nut into place. Next, grab your load bar clamps and your clamp to spine hardware. The load bar clamps are the same at every position, but where you install them, aligning these holes to the holes and slots across the spine will dictate the height. At the rear of the vehicle, you wanna be in the middle position where the bolts through, put on the flat washers and then install the nylocks hand tight and leave them loose so that they move like this to facilitate lining up the uh, load bars. They should be like this. At the rear middle position, put the bolts through the top slot like this and then line that to the slot and install the washers 
and no rocks. And again, leave them loose like this so that they move. So around. for the front middle foot, put the bolts through the middle holes, align it to the slot, and install the flat washers and the nylon. The front location is going to use the middle holes as well. So just put your bolts through there. Should look like this. Align them to the slots. Uh, put on the washers and the nylocks. Then repeat the process on the passenger side so that all of the load bar clamps are installed and hanging loose like that. Next, we're going to prep the hardware for the feet to load bars. The bag's labeled feet to load bars. All of the bolts in here need the thread locker applied to around the last four or five threads. And just like the other ones for the rack to roof, you want to make sure that they're wrapped all the way around and then let those air dry for 10 to 15 minutes until they're not uh, sticky anymore. Now we're going to prep the load bar clamps to receive the load bars. Each one will get a triple slide to the inside, face the flat edge, and the hardware goes to the outside. And you want to leave these loose enough that you can simply slide the load bars through them into place. So I'm just going hand tight here. And you want to be able to wiggle. You need the movement here and the ability to move and flex the foot to get everything to line up properly on the car. Next part, you'll want a friend to help slide the load bars across the feet from one side to the other. Align the side of the load bar through the triple slide and hand it off to your friend. and then feed it. You need to use a tape measure to make sure that both sides are the same. I'm at four inches. I'm at three and a half. Three and seven eighths. Now we want to take a measurement of the load bar from the inside edge of the load bar clamp to the outside edge of the foot to center the load bars on the vehicle. I'm going to make this measurement from the driver's side. These numbers should be fairly close to the same on your vehicle. Just double check them side to side to make sure. The front load bar, three inches. The second load bar from the front, three and three eighths. The third load bar from the front is three and three quarter. And the rear load bar is four and nine sixteenths. Yeah. After you make sure the load bars are centered from driver to passenger side, use a five thirty seconds Allen wrench and tighten the hardware up. Repeat that process at all eight locations, and then we'll be ready to put the sides on. When you unpack your Bravo rack, lay everything out and inspect the contents to make sure that it wasn't damaged during shipping. Now we're going to hang the driver's side. We'll start by aligning the slots in the top of the armor to the back load bar and the very front load bar. And the reason we left these loose, then we'll move them around to line up the hardware in the center sections. You do need two people for this step. At the back of the vehicle, leave this slot open and skip the rear and just line up the slot to the hardware at this location and the front okay. you should be able to take advantage of this being loose pull forward on the load bar to line up the hole to the slot and just start that hardware by hand as well with the rear and the front ones started do the same thing, twist the load bar into position, 
and start the hardware by hand. That twisting helps orient the foot to go against the uh, contour of the roof of the vehicle. The front middle, you may need to push down on the load bar to align the holes. See where I can push down on that and just align those. And then all four of the mounting load bars, our hardware is started on the driver's side. So now we'll go do the passenger side the same way. Make sure the rack's positioned properly on the car. Refer to the load bar slot at the rear of the rack and just push it forward into place until this hardware is fully buried inside of the rear slot. The rear load bar installs vertically using the two holes at the very back of the slot so that the load bar falls behind the antenna. In order to provide antenna clearance, there is no load bar that goes into this slot. We've left it open in case we want to come back and add some stuff to this location later. Go ahead and install the remaining load bar for this slot and this slot. With all the load bars installed, now we'll go back and tighten up all the hardware using a 5-30-second Allen wrench. Now we're ready to install the windscreen. Like we talked about earlier, the cut for the windscreen will vary based on your order. This one's a no-cut windscreen, so there aren't any additional holes or hardware. Grab the hardware bag that says windscreen and go put the fairing into the truck. Buddy to help you. You're going to align the holes in the end of the windscreen to the holes in the front of the roof rack. So just position it, align the holes, slide the hardware in, and apply the nylocks to the back of the hardware. Now we use a five millimeter Allen and a 13 millimeter wrench and we'll tighten up the hardware of the load bar clamp to the spine. Refer to the chart at the end of this video for the torque specifications for all the hardware used throughout the roof rack. Work your way around the rack, make sure all the hardware is torqued to spec, and then reinstall the headliner in reverse order from disassembly. For the Alpha roof rack, we'll go over the major component differences versus the Bravo rack. The rail mounting system and the feet and the load bars are already on the vehicle, so you need to go to that part of the video to get to this stage. In an Alpha, you've got your groove tech, which for this vehicle is color matched with the factory Kia color. You've got your armor, which goes on the outside of the groove tech. Windscreen, this is a no cut. If you're cut for a light, it's gonna look a lot different than this and it'll have some additional hardware. You'll need to refer to the lighting video for how to make light bars into this windscreen. You've got your grab handles, which you'll need to tie. And then you've got your hardware kit right here. As with all of our hardware kits, they are bolt packed. So there will be some nuts and bolts in here that you don't necessarily need for this install. Just follow along this video. You'll have everything you need in the back. Now that you've got your rails installed, you're ready to mate your groove tech to the four load bars that are on the vehicle. You're gonna need hardware bag 8001.2 and a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench. We let the load bars loose to help us line the hardware up through the slots to the ends of the bars. The driver's side groove tech and make sure, see the protrusion on the rib nut? That goes to the inside of the car like this. If you've got them stuck out, your spacing is going to be off. At the back of the load, at the back load bar, line the second from the last slot up and start your hardware. Then move to the very front. It's going to be the second groove from the front. And same thing, just put the hardware in by hand and leave it loose. Now we'll go do the passenger side. We've got the passenger side on, now we're ready to install the hardware to the middle two load bars. So we're gonna line up 
the slot to the bar again and just by hand start that hardware. We don't want to tighten anything up until we adjust the rack front to back on the vehicle and make sure that we're even left to right. Once you've got all the hardware started for all four load bars on both sides, adjust the rack to where the rear load bar is seated all the way back in the second from the rear slot. Now we're gonna tighten up all four load bars on both sides of the vehicle, and then we'll add the remaining load bars into the groove tech. For this next part, you're gonna want a friend to help you install the remaining load bars across the top of the vehicle so you don't damage the finish. But I wanna talk about the rear load bar position. See this horizontal slot in here? The rear load bar needs to install vertically using these two holes. And this provision is for the optional quick wire wiring to pass from the driver's side to the passenger side. You have something very similar in the front. You can mount the front load bar horizontally like this or vertically in any of these three positions and where it will align, the wiring would pass through those uh, rectangular holes. The reason for mounting a front load bar vertically, it gives it more weight capacity for the larger light assortments that we offer. We're gonna install the rear and front load bar first. They require the hardware in bag 8001.1 it's got hex nuts in it. That's to allow you to tighten them up and adjust them once the armor's installed. The front and rear load bar hardware is concealed. So you wanna use the hex hardware back in the rear and the front. With the rear load bar installed vertically, you have plenty of clearance around the factory shark fin antenna. Front load bar, we're gonna install it horizontally so we won't be using this vertical, but if you'll help me rotate this, I'll show you. When it's aligned to the vertical positions, you'd be able to pass your wiring right through that hole through the load bar to the other side to keep it completely hidden. Once you've got all the load bars installed to the groove tech, you'll be ready to tighten up the hardware between the rail and the load bar clamp. Use a five millimeter Allen wrench and a 13 millimeter wrench and just snug this hardware in place. You'll come back and torque everything down once the installation is complete. Now we're ready to install the windscreen. You're gonna grab hardware bag 8001.3, five millimeter Allen, 13 millimeter wrench. For this step, you're gonna want a friend. Here's your hardware. See the folded flange on the windscreen with the two holes in it? Those holes correspond to the two holes at the front of your groove tech. The windscreen mounts to the inside of the groove tech. It's the same width as your load bar. And just align your hardware. And then reach inside and install the nuts. This next step's easier with two people just because of the length. We're gonna attach the armor to the groove tack at the front and the rear. The remaining rib nut holes are for your included grab handles. You'll need to tie those before you install them to the vehicle. You'll wanna to refer to our installation video for grab handles for that part. Your front armor attachment point is the hole at the forwardmost section of the armor, and it's gonna to align to the very front rib nut. You take your bolt and your lock washer, slide them through the hole, take the supplied plastic spacer, align it over the bolt, align it to the rib nut, and hand tight right now is good. You're just trying to get the armor in place on the vehicle. All that's left is to put the grab handles on. So grab hardware bag 8001.6, 
I've already removed two bolts, two lock washers, and four spacers for the front handle. Every handle at all six locations is gonna use the same hardware in the same order. You know, bolt, lock washer, slip it through the handle hole. Same thing on the other side. Now, you'll have a spacer between the lace plate and the armor, and then you'll have an additional spacer between the armor and the groove tack. And then just tighten it up with a five millimeter Allen wrench. With all the handles installed, we just need to go and tighten up the front and rear armor bolts on both sides. And installation is complete. Once you've got everything done, refer to the torque specs at the end of this guide and apply torque to all the fasteners to the recommended specifications that we provide. Our test model has a sunroof in it and it will interfere with the load bars in this roof rack. If you're installing our optional fresh air kit, just continue watching this video to see how to reconfigure this rack system to operate the sunroof with full compatibility. If you ordered your rack for a vehicle with a sunroof, you would have seven load bars instead of eight and you would have these shorter load bars, end caps and screws to frame in on top of the vehicle and allow full operation of the sunroof. So the first thing that you need to do is uh, install an end cap to each load bar. When you order your roof rack for a vehicle with a sunroof, instead of having eight load bars, you'd have seven. The third load bar from the front isn't used to allow clearance for the sunroof to move. You have the smaller load bar chunks that we installed the end cap to. Just install a threaded insert, align it to the slot in the load bar clamp, Slide it to the end and install the load bar hardware. Once you've got those tight, you can tighten these three bolts. Then repeat the process on the passenger side and your sunroof will have full operation.